for the EBU Silver Featherweight Championship. It's brought to you by Frank Warren on behalf of Queensbury in association with OPI, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red and Univent. The bout is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Your steward in charge is Des Reeves. Uh, along with the European Boxing Union, the supervisor, Charlie Giles. Introducing your three scoring judges from ringside, from Burton, Belgium, Mr. Daniel van der Veel, from Vienna, Austria, Mr. Ilan Homovic, and from Monaco, Mr. Jean Robert Lane. Your timekeeper is Nick White and your referee, Ansi Gerparocci from Helsinki. Introducing first the challenger in the blue corner. He is unbeaten with a record of 14 wins and no defeats, with seven big wins coming by way of knockout. At the weigh-in, he scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, and tonight he wears the white shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting from Bearston, Scotland, the reigning British and Commonwealth featherweight champion, Introducing Nathaniel the Nightmare Collins! And across the ring in the red corner, he has a record of 18 wins, only two defeats and two draws, with four big wins coming by way of knockout. At the way in, he scaled eight stone, 13 pounds, and tonight he wears the blue shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former two-time Italian champion, the former WBC international silver champion, and the reigning, defending, EBU silver featherweight champion from Cambiano, Italy, Francesco Grazie. Okay, gentlemen, I will quickly fight. Follow the rules or pay my comments. This is the belt line. This is the belt line. No punches below this line. May the best man win. Safe hands. Good luck. A very bold career move. Nathaniel Collins, the reigning British and Commonwealth featherweight champion, seeking to spread his reputation a little further and quite fast in European terms. All the while, very keen to campaign on in pursuit of outright ownership of a Lonsdale belt. But that's for another night. I think he may well have his hands full here, Richie, tonight against Francesco Grandelli, who has fought at a very high level and for the proper European title. He's fought for the European title. He's been beaten by another Italian, actually, as the uh, Mario Forte. He's also drew with him. But bit, what's it, what's significant there, Paul, is Forte is a southpaw also, so he may struggle against um, southpaw opposition. And Colin certainly is decent indeed. Good career up to now, 14 and 0, seven knockouts, so decent power also. So yes, on paper, this could be an interesting one. Really interesting signing by Queensbury, I thought at the time, Richie. I thought the timing of it was particularly interesting. One of those uh, partnerships where you say, go on, you bring out the best in me and I'll bring out the best in you. And so far it's worked really nicely. Yeah, it has worked. As I say, he's, uh, he's a decent safe indeed, Collins. Skillful, good mover, and decent power. And Grandelli, you see that his work cut out. Just taking a look at Collins on the outside, keeping the movement going. And Collins holding that centre of the ring and... Uh, Bad first round here. Pretty tentative start from Grandelli, but don't be fooled by that. The record is strong. Some quality operators have come a cropper against him, including Rhys Bellotti and Christian Naves. The first meeting with the aforementioned Mauro Forte was a split draw, I understand. Collins, of course, knows all that and has prepared for it accordingly. And he's looking really good in there in the opening couple of minutes. Yeah, I think he's boxing well at distance early on here, Collins. 
He's been well beyond his jab. He's not holding his feet. And just keeping his distance and measuring the distance with that jab. It was a perfect example there. It was a good shot. I think Grandelli's just taking this as a scouting mission for Grandelli in this opening round. He's staying on the outside and seeing what Collins has got. Collins for me. He's winning the round just behind uh, the better boxing, holding the centre of the ring, and I think he's just controlling things better. Apparently felt that they didn't quite see the uh, best of Collins last time out as he defended the British and Commonwealth titles against Zach Miller in Manchester. Got into a bit of a rut in the fight in terms of his rhythm, and they feel that Grandelli's style might be more to his liking, and it seems that is the case so far tonight. Grandelli there just made the mistake of just he, probably trying to get a little bit too close too early in the contest as he's walking forward, closing the gap and gets caught. Oh, it's really bubbling along really well here tonight. Welcome back, everybody, to the York Court Bethel Green. Nathaniel Collins put the first round in the bank, 12-rounder. Joe Hamm, who's been with him, man and boy, on this big night. Just setting the task for the second round and, indeed, the road ahead, which could yet be a long one against Francesco Gandelli, a very capable operator from Italy. He has started orthodox style here tonight against the Southpaw. He can be a right bag of tricks, Richie. I've seen him before, you know. He'd try anything. Well, his movement is, um, is quite good at the moment, but on the outside, but he's not, he's not de delivering any good shots. So he's trying to stay elusive on the outside, but he's not actually coming back with anything himself to trouble Collins. I think Collins taking the centre of the ring, working well behind his jab and just maintaining the gap. And he's sort of letting uh, Grandelli just do this movement back and forward. But Collins' his, his straight shots are much better. He's accurate and, uh, like I say, he took the first round. That's what, that's what Grandelli's got to do. He's got to concentrate on getting up close and maybe then bringing that right hand left hook into, into play. But at the moment, he's been outboxed on the outside. He has been outboxed. It's almost as though they've come here with a plan tonight to do something to confuse Collins a little bit, and Collins has seen it off and raised it. Well, good variation there from Collins as well, because he's working well with his jab, but a couple of good body shots went in there. There's that left hand again downstairs. So Grandelli's got the problem of work there to get away from the jab, but also then, Collins switches downstairs with that left hand. As you say, Richie, if he's going to afford Collins the distance to work, he's going to have a, a hard night of it. That would appear to be the case. I mentioned Rhys Bellotti and the uh, victory there, but... I am told that in that fight, the body was a vulnerable area and that the Collins team believe that that is something that they can capitalise on tonight. We have seen that early on. And as Grandelli's coming forward, Paul, that's what Collins made target. He's working well behind his straight shots, Collins, with the jab, but we've said he switches downstairs with a couple of those left hands. And with a left, little short left uppercuts as his opponent's coming forward that he made target. But at the moment, I think this is a real sort of patient display from Collins, staying on the outside, and he's coping with this music, with this, um, this, with this movement from Grandelli. And uh, I think he's boxing well here. Me too. Moment. To a plan, they've really thought about it. But Grandelli's one of those guys, Richie, could just take a, little, a round or two to crank it up. It's been a terrific start from Collins but Grandelli may only be getting started himself. Welcome back, everybody. The big featherweight title fight here tonight at the York Hall, Bethel Green. Two rounds into it, terrific start. For the home fighter and for the visiting fighter, it's been a test, but I've seen this guy rise to the test before, Francesco Grandelli, Nathaniel Collins, real smart plan, 
very well executed from the get-go here tonight. A bit more out into the side here early in this third round, Grandani, but Collins, Richie, the phrase you use, dead right, patience. If he stays patient, I think he can see most of the problems and a way to work his way through them. Yeah, again, boxing sensibly, Paul. He's not doing anything special. He's just do, doing the basics. He's keeping that gap between himself and his opponent, adjusting his feet. Sometimes he'll step backwards to create that space, and he's just punching into that space. So at the moment, Collins is he, boxing well. Grandelli with the movement, but it, it's, it's negative movement, if anything. He's got to be a little bit quicker on his feet and get, get up close find a way to get up close to Collins, maybe double up the jab and then switch his own attacks downstairs. But the movement on the outside at the moment is not working for him, so he's got to change his approach. I thought he tried to do that a little bit at the start of the round, Richie, going out to the side a bit more. But maybe he doesn't believe in it enough, I don't know. Yeah. But he knows damage to um, Collins, so you see a couple of shots have got through. Oh, that is, you know what, Paul, he's took a, a punch on the nose there, uh, Collins, looks to be damage to the nose of, of Collins. One or two drips of blood, that will encourage Grandelli, try to close the distance a little better. The nose doesn't look very good, Richie. I know it's an occupational hazard. Yeah, he's took a shot on it, most certainly. Might be a broken nose there for Collins. There's an old saying, Paul, you can't go into the rain and dodge all the spots. You know, he's winning this contest, but he's got, he's got caught with a, with a good punch. He's not noted as a particularly big puncher, is Grandelli. He's only got to find the target and time it right, of course. Good boxing there from Collins, anticipating the attack coming and just fought fire with fire there. He has retained his composure really exceptionally well. Now, of course, he should be. He's a championship fighter. He's a British and Commonwealth champion, but he's not used to being inconvenienced the way he was in this round. And he still has put it in the bank, I think. Most no, certainly, Paul. Hello, I can't you. Right. We think we know what did the damage here, Richie. Yeah, the, it could have been an elbow here. Let's have a look here. That might have been the. That might have been an elbow that caused the damage. It's obviously broken the nose there. Yeah, there it is. There. I should think it's broken. Paul, the weight sort of um, crooked. It's gone crooked, hasn't it? So it's probably a broken nose. That's what you get in, 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 a, in a fight, Paul, you know? That's the way it is. In the other corner, I know this will chime with you, Richie. Francesco Grandelli has his father, Antonelli. Of course, many will remember the very well-loved Len Woodall, who guided Richie through his career. Grandelli came out with a few of his tricks in that third round of varying degrees of legality. I think we might see a bit more of that from him. I think he had, uh, had a better round, Grandelli, that third round, but I don't think he won the round. I thought um, Collins finished qu quite strong. But certainly, Grandelli's learning as this fight's going ahead, yes. so he knows he's got to get up closer, he knows he's got to do things different, and occasionally, Collins... Yes, he does drop his hands, because so, when any boxer throws a punch ball, then they're a little bit vulnerable in getting their hands back, and, and so on. And Grandelli, you see, get, he's trying to get close, so he's trying to grasp the opportunity when he can. 
He knows he's got to be quick in there with his feet, so he's learning, but he's three rounds down. And he's got a lot to, to claw back. He's one of those guys, Rich, he just needs a round to get going. And this style is what I've seen with him before. The little darting movements, hand and feet. But by now, the pattern of the fight seems very well set, and Collins is comfortable, isn't he? Well, he's comfortable because his ring position is perfect as well. Centre of the ring, and he's keeping Grandelli on the outside for most part of, of, of this contest. What Grandelli's got to probably do a little bit more of is double up his attacks or sustain the pressure and try and push Collins back to the ropes. That could change things. But at the moment, as I said, Collins is coping with the movement, so Grandelli has got to change it. Got to quicken up and has certainly got to get up close. So he's got to take the odd caution, um, sorry, uh, the odd risk here and there, and get up close to him and try and land the bigger shots. I know he's not technically on home territory tonight, but the crowd here at the York Hall Battle Green are really taking to Nathaniel Collins here. Had that big win against Raza Hamza, of course, that was a very short night for him back in August here at the York Hall, and tonight, in a higher grade of opponent, we're seeing a bit more of what he's got. And I'm pretty impressed with this, Richie, I'll be honest. Yeah, and me for it's going well up to now. That's not too bad now from Grandelli. Grandelli for me, Paul, has got to sustain it a little bit more. He's just allowing Collins then to have a little bit of a breather, regroup, and then set again and wait for the next attack. So he's got to either double up them attacks or he's got to sustain the pressure and put Collins under more um, pressure, Paul. So he's coping with the pace, Collins is. Again, showing willing Grandelli, but not quite delivering on it. Yeah. Keep on behind the jab. Are you all right, Sir Joe? I'm fine, fine, he says, Nathaniel Collins. Yeah, in his yeah. best Glasgow. Here he is in the east end of London, and I think he's winning some admirers here tonight. He is indeed. Tough Scotsman, isn't he, um, Collins? He's boxing very well up to now. Apparently he used to get the odd look when he was walking through the gorbals back and forth from what he says. He said he was residing in one of the poshest parts of Glasgow, and he went training in one of the toughest. <laughs> You might get the odd look tomorrow morning if he starts walking through Paul. Is that uh, nose damage? I think if you live like that, you're quite self-confident anyway, aren't you? I think he will be. Terms to Grandelli early in this fifth round. Grandelli has not got into his top gear so no. far tonight. No, still content to just stay on the outside and look for openings and that, but that's what we're, we're saying about Collins how patient he is, just waiting and just picking him off with the jab and waiting for him to come forward. But Richie, one other element to this, and we were told that in the Bellotti fight in particular, Grandelli took very badly to the bodywork that Bellotti put upon him. I'm not seeing much of an attempt at all by Grandelli to do that to Collins. No, you're right, Paul, but um, Grandelli, for me, Paul, he's struggling to get close. You see, he's on the outside again, and he's looking for openings here and there, he's going left, he's going right. But Collins staying patient and just sticking out that jab and... If anything, Grandelli now is getting more and more frustrated because he knows it's slipping away. As Richie reminds us, Grandelli is the title holder. This is the European silver title. Not to be uh, confused with the proper European title, but it wouldn't have put Nathaniel Collins in a very good position if he wins well here tonight and he's on course to do that to actually 
go British, Commonwealth and European title proper. Yes, impressive indeed. You can't ignore a guy who's got those three belts, Richie, I don't care. No, not at all, Paul. Again, too far out. There's no way you're going to land that left up from that distance. You can see it coming a mile away. So, again, um, just signs of frustration, just leaping in with that left up, Grandelli, too far out. And again, uh, I think Collins just controlling the pace, Paul. Yes. Controlling the pace. Oh, that was better for but me. Once he gets close, Richie, it's taken an awfully long time, almost to the halfway point in the fight. Welcome back, everybody. You're called Bethnal Green. The crowd captivated by the featherweight contest in there right now. And next, we will go to super featherweight once more, the super talented Ryan Garner. But what an intriguing fight ahead against Liam Dillon, until very recently, the British champion. Great card, again, here on TNT Sports tonight. Richie, you've got it as a shutout, haven't you? Yeah, I haven't given Grandelli a, ra a round, Paul. I think he's been totally outboxed. There have been glimpses. There was towards the end of that last round. He got close and landed a nice left hook, but they are literally glimpses here and there from Grandelli. I think he's been outboxed every round up to now. Just did get that little bit closer at last with the very closing salvo in the fifth round. A little bit of encouragement, much needed for Grandelli. There he is, standing on his toe for all he's worth. Needs must if you're Grandelli, gets close again. He started this round better than probably most of them, Paul. As you said, he's starting to get a little bit closer. And in the 12-round um, contest, yes, you can slow down here and there and have the round off and maybe, who knows, if Andrew Collins may have just be feeling the pace. But it's a better start for round from Grandelli. He has at least picked up for where he left off in those closing moments in round five. Well worth keeping an eye on the footwork here, Rich, because it looks like the penny has dropped, and again, he does get close. Right, so what's happened here now, Paul, in this round? You see, Collins has started to trade a little bit more now, holding his feet, starting to trade. So that's allowed Grandelli more success. He's got an opponent who's, who's not really moving or not keeping him on the end of those long straight shots. He's trading with him, and Grandelli's having a fair share of it as well. This is the type of contest that he wants. Absolutely, and very much what they've wanted to see from their man in that Grandelli corner. And now the Italians are getting quite excited. There's a shift in the plot here. Subtle for the moment, Collins is still the boss. But yeah. Grandelli's making him work. Yeah, time. because in this situation, Paul, it very becomes a very much a 50-50. When you're trading like that, you can take a shot, you can land a shot. And now he's having a little bit more success, and that's why they're encouraged in that Italian corner. Finally, one or two to the body at long last, Grandelli. I think Collins caught the right hand fairly flush. I know he was leaning down, but you wait forward, it was all right. But there's a little bit of concern now in Collins' corner that Collins has let Grandelli into this by stealth. He wants it to be hard, he wants it like this, Grandelli. Collins was giving him a boxing lesson for five and a half rounds. Yeah, exactly. Now it's a lot more even. This is what I thought we'd see from Grandelli from the off tonight, yeah. Richard. Well, that's probably what the contest that he wanted. Here's Liam Dillon getting ready to go. We've seen Ryan Garner in the opposing dressing room. Super Featherweights meeting. Very big night for both. Dillon, local boy who's come through the hard way. Admirable career progression. 
all the way up to the British title, which he lost to the fighter we've been speaking about, Rhys Bellotti. A change in the tone in the corner. Not the first time there's been a bit of hairdressing work in the corner. What was interesting there, Paul, they're certainly not happy in Collins' corner. They know that their boxer has let their, the opponent into it in that round. He's taken some risks, he's got caught with a couple. And, and, and Grandelli may have just shaded it. On a side note, a fashion note, Richie, is it appropriate that guys are allowed to have that kind of long hair coming into the ring, <laughs> tied up in that fashion, Richie? Well, a lot, a lot of people have to spend a lot of money in very posh hairdressers yeah. to get the job done right. He's just got a bit of gaffer tape on it. <laughs> See, listen, we're all individuals, and if you, he likes to have his hair long... Oh, good, good shot. Grandelli backs off. He was rocked by that. He took it well enough. The hair's all over the place again, there might be another interruption. Bad hair day or not, Collins gets on with it. Yeah, what a sustained attack this is from Collins. We've been saying that Grandelli should be boxing like this, but Collins is really taking it to him. Yes. And feels that he could finish the job here, Paul. Needs to be careful for me. Yeah, absolutely. Takes a right hand as Grandelli came out of that clinch, it wasn't really delivered with full force at the point of the uh, extension of the arm, but a little reminder, nonetheless. And he calls it off. But Collins has just put manners on him with that little passage, hasn't he? Yeah, he has indeed. I need to do so again, though, I reckon. Yeah, it's caught. Again, it's Grandelli's type of fight, isn't it? So he's taken a good shot, but he's come through it. Grandelli, I think Collins has got to regroup again, get back to his boxing. Get Grandelli to come over that front foot, make the mistakes again and pick him off. But what, when they're toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Grandelli is right in this contest, Paul. And the hair is all over the place. Now, saying about the hair, I mean, if people want their hair like that, that's fair enough. But well, make sure it doesn't come loose in the fight. You've got to. Crazy. You know, it's even become a hindrance to him now, Grandelli himself. Must be a distraction. He keeps shaking his head. Anyway, he's more used to it than Collins. He might be sending out for a pair of scissors in a minute. It's not the fluid Collins of the first... Nearly five rounds tonight. He's put that part of the fight in the bank, I reckon, and Richie, I think you concur, but there might be another twist or two in the overall story of this fight. 12 rounds, remember, at high level, and again at close quarters, Grandelli knows what he's doing. Yeah. Grandelli experienced and prepared to take a shot and then come back with a couple of good punches of his own. Oh, that's a close round indeed. It is. They're animated and they're excited and they're not yet going for the scissors. Do you remember when Paulie Malinaji did that? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Good memory, Paul. Yeah. Similar sort of style. Well, me and Steve Bucks were there. That's why we remember it, Richard. It's a bit chaotic, honestly, and uh, flying in all directions. I think that some of these are extensions, actually, <laughs> which makes it more absurd, in all seriousness. Crazy. That shouldn't be allowed. Good work from the referee, though. Grandelli, by all means available to him, and I have seen this with him before, Richie, emphasising all means available, an elbow which did a bit of damage to the nose when he was under pressure early on, getting up onto Collins' chest, well, that's fair enough, but this additional aid, in terms of distraction at least, 
with the flying hairdo. It's all to be negotiated here by Collins. You know what, Paul, I don't know whether a bit of complacency might have come in, into Collins' work because up until a couple of rounds ago, I thought he was fairly comfortable. He'd won every round. He was boxing sensible. He was boxing at range more and more. And then he just switched off and he just allowed um, Grandelli just to close that gap. And then he's in a dogfight then and then he gets caught with a couple of good shots. He, I think he, he lost the one round, then he certainly lost that last round. Again, it was a close round, but I thought I'd just give it to Grandelli. And he's allowed the opponent in, so he's allowed the opponent to start to dictate his type of fight. Up until two rounds ago, I thought he was cruising this. Me too. But 12 rounds of championship action, and there can be many a twist and a turn. There's just not the same confident control from Nathaniel Collins in this phase of the fight, round eight. And the problem you've got, Paul, when you start taking clean shots, that starts to tire you out. Unless you've been there, you, you don't realise that. But all of a sudden, you're in a fight that you're coasting, you're six or seven rounds in, and you start taking some big shots, and then all of a sudden you start feeling it. And I think probably that's what's happening with Collins. He's really feeling the pace now, and the shots that he's taking are, are adding to that fatigue. Grandelli says it's a rather grand comeback at the moment. The blue corner for the Italians with his father at ringside tonight, and indeed also in that corner there is Francesco Cerci, who, it's a different era now, but top-line operator, twice fought Charlie Magri, who was an outstanding flyweight world champion. Wow, so some experience you were there. Kid, yeah, top. absolutely. Charlie Magri, one of my heroes he was. WBC champ, what a fighter. could throw a bag of cement for fun, Grandelli. And now he's finding the body of Collins, and Collins is feeling them. Yeah, he is. I mean, pack, punch output now, there's more coming from Grandelli than there is Collins. Collins is still in this, of course he is, but there's just more shots coming from Grandelli, and they're probably just catching the judge's eye. Intriguing. Excited and animated. As we uh, take a check on your scorecard, Richie. Oh, my goodness me, it's getting rather close here, Richie. Yeah, he's creeping back into it. In my, that's my opinion anyway, Paul. Um, I give him the first five rounds, but the last three, then Grandelli for me, is coming back. A great many words. The most important one that I heard in that Italian corner, bravissimo. This is the fight. Again, Richie, I thought we would see from the start tonight. Well, horses for courses, but uh, Grandelli has gradually clawed his way back, Paul, and he's just got um, Collins to hold his feet and trade. And that's what he's probably wanted from the start, but um, Collins just outboxing for those first five. And I'd just like to see him try and get back to that sort of style, but obviously he's getting more and more tired. And now he's into a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Yeah. It's a real strong opponent. Yeah. The back was to the blue ring post again there, wasn't it? That's it. In these type of contests, Paul, keep the punches straight so you keep a gap between yourself and your opponent. And with your movement, go circular, so get off the ropes, stay in the centre of the ring or box and ring space. Don't let him get in the corners or on the ropes. That's what Collins has got to try and get back to. And at the start of this contest for the first four or five rounds, that's what he did. We mentioned it several times, how he controlled the centre of the ring and kept Grandelli on the outside. But the tables have turned. They have, and the southpaw jab looks rather tired. 
no massive distress signals in terms of overall fitness, but it's just not the same weapon, is it, now? No. no. And obviously that's added to Grandelli's confidence, and he senses victory. Maybe Grandelli all along, Richie, thought, I will get to him, I will grind him down. Yeah, He's that... grinding him down now. Yeah, maybe that was the master plan. Oh, that's good work, though. Now he should move. Funny sort of Italian job, though, isn't it, really, to give away four or five rounds and then get going? Yeah. Might work out for him. We need to see the classy Collins of the first part of the fight. That's a bit more like that it, but away great. you go, and he doesn't really do that, Richie. No, that was a lovely one, too, though, Paul. That was lovely boxing. This is where you shouldn't be backing up. Just stay in that centre. And as he comes into range, just pop the jab in the straight left hand now. That's it, you see? There you go. That's what he's got to do. But once you edge back to the ropes, it just encourages him to come forward. It's a fight we cannot take our eye off or prejudge. Never quite as explosive as what we've seen earlier here at the York Hall Bethnal Green, but. It's high quality, it's intriguing, and it is still very much in the balance. So backstage now with Denzel Bentley, there's still a little bit of time to go before his big moment comes tonight. What a cracking middleweight contest it is at the top of the bill. He has to get this one right tonight, and he knows it. There's Chris Burke, actually, in his dressing room, one of his closest friends in boxing, who's had his good days and bad days here at York Hall Bethnal Green. This has to be a good one, and all the Bentley team, Martin Bowers is in there as well, they know that in against Danny Dignam. And Collins is still in an argument here against Francesco Grandelli. Only three to go, Richie. Yes, yeah, so in that last round, I thought just Collins just edged uh, Grandelli out. A little bit better boxing from him. Maintain that gap for longer periods. In the, in the round, I think Grandelli probably senses that now and he knows he's got to close that gap again. Can I add one other element to this, Richie? This is scored by EBU-appointed officials, self-evidently. It's a European title belt on the line, of course, and sometimes over the years we have seen differing interpretations to what the so-called orthodox view would be if it were three British judges or three American judges or three South American judges, etc. Well, that's fair enough, Paul, but I, I see it very difficult how you could score the first five rounds not to, to Collins because I thought he outboxed him completely and Grandelli was really struggling at distance. Nothing in that. But um, it's, since then, it's certainly been a different fight, much, much closer, and Grandelli's had a lot of success up close. can't keep him off him really back into that Italian corner Collins trying to give off the signals that he's seeing him off that he's got his measure that yeah. might be a little optimistic Still, the pace has dropped just a little bit from Grandelli. He's put a lot into the last three rounds. I don't know, Richie, might be saving a bit for the last two. Yeah, his feet have slowed a little bit, haven't they? The intensity's just dropped a little bit, so he may be feeling the pace also. And that's probably just helped Collins a little bit here. But still, when he's up close, um, Grandelli is so dangerous. He really is. Unorthodox, 
a handful, but he's fit and he's game. And there's no point telling him he's outclassed, he just ignores that. He was outclassed style-wise in the first part of this, but that was only the first chapter. Still that nagging doubt that Collins could get tagged in one of these exchanges, properly tagged. I think we're heading into the proper championship round shortly and both are going to have to dig deep. Certainly captivated the crowd here at the Orkhol National Green. Not used to fighting overseas, Grandelli. They've been coming to him in Italy. Loose translation, Richie. We're right in it. Well, I think they are right in it, but in that last round, he might have just been edged down. I thought he slowed. The feet slowed a little bit, and that just allowed Collins to, to catch him as he's coming forward. Who knows? But they are close rounds, Paul, but I just think Collins is edged back ahead with those last two rounds. Of course, you are the ideal man, Rishi, to see us through a fight like this. Thinking back to your own career, European title against Silvio Branco. Yeah, yeah, tough fight for me, Paul. Uh, indeed, was. Branco, quality kid, went on to win the WBA like heavyweight title. And yeah, I had to really dig deep that night. I managed to catch him in the ninth round, but it was either him or me that was going to go. So, yeah, I've been in this situation, tough. The, the Italian boxers are, you know, they're all tough. They come to win. And uh, this fellow has here tonight as well, but yeah, I've been there myself. Grandelli must know that he's got to keep on the offensive. Yeah, he's got to keep the pressure on. And you're right, Paul. I mean, judges might see it differently because of this front foot pressure. In the last five or six rounds, he has been coming on stronger and stronger. Another reason I have to say it, Richie, is I once saw Damien Kelly in Belfast. To our eye, I'm not saying we're experts, but completely dominate against an Italian in a European title fight in Austin. Yeah, I remember the fight. And he was a quality kid, Kelly. Yeah, he did lose it, I remember. Not as accurate as he needs to be, Grandelli. You get the sense that Paul gaining in confidence again, knows he's got to get up close, really taking it again, punch out, but more punches yes. coming from Grandelli. I think he saved a bit in the tenth, Richie. Yeah. Well, this is a storm that Collins has got to get through. Centre of there, just holding on on the inside. Winning it hard at the moment, Collins. Yeah. Perhaps it might come to be seen as a rite of passage on his rise to the very top level, Nathaniel Collins. But it, he's going to learn plenty from this. Lovely little shot on the inside there from Collins. Sort of little left up a cup. But again, oh, good shot, Ranzelli. He's tough, Paul. It's a proper hard one, this now, isn't it? Yeah, the, the fitness of both boxers is being really tested now. All credit to them. Obviously trained really hard, taking big shots. That's a good shot there from Collins. Grandelli backed up a little bit, but back to it in the pocket. Output is everything to him. And they both sit down quite heavily on their stools. They need the minute. Come Jardin, you understand? Okay, so what's going on? Don't trade them unless we're under big shot. Yeah, they become champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too good. Yeah. Smart work next round. Okay. Tough, tough Smart fight work. indeed. 
Both trading on the inside, cracking little shot there from Collins, just the more accurate puncher. But blow for blow, isn't it? They're switching the attacks from body to head, both feeling it. And the Italian corner still feel their man can pull it off. All or nothing it has to be for Francesco Grandelli. Nathaniel Collins has put on quite a show tonight. Some really polished work in the early part of it. But 12 rounds at European level. You've got to show that you've got the all-round capabilities. Collins may be shading it to our eye, but we don't know for certain. Well, I thought he lost that last round, Paul. It was a good round for Grandelli. He certainly increased the punch output, but he will probably know that he needs something big in this last round. They would have told him that in that corner. You could see the urgency in the Italian corner. They know that probably he needs a big last round and probably a stoppage here. Collins, didn't he? Yeah. As he was coming forward as well. Has to be the hardest fight of his career, Richie. Sure. De oh, definitely. 100 percent And doing it the hard way right to the end. It's a, a little bit of a classic, your call. Affair, isn't it now? Not quite the intensity in the build-up, given that we've got a very talented kid from the west of Scotland in Nathaniel Collins and an Italian coming to the east end of London. Maybe not quite the edge that Bentley Dignam are going to bring to the ring, which is the Battle of London, really. However, it is a battle, this, for a big prize. There's some quality boxing here on the inside, Paul, from both of them. Short and mid-range shots are going in, they're hitting the target. We often see that in contests, but, you know, a lot miss the targets in contests, but here, Landing good shots, quality work on the inside here, clean stuff. What a hard fight. Really tough. Um, it's been that good, Richie. It wouldn't shock me if we were to see these two meet again for yeah. the European title proper, because they both must be contenders for it. Yeah, it's a kind of a battle, isn't it? If that is the case, uh, Paul, Collins has got to get the contest over here, because this would be even tougher in Italy. The blood has been spraying out. All over Richie's notes. Yeah, I'm going to put a complaint in about that. You were used to it, you're not allowed to complain. And uncomplainingly, these two have really gone at it all the way. Now with the finish line in sight. Digging it out. Neither really wants to give even a half step. It's been two fights in one, really, from Nathaniel Collins. A cool, smooth operator early on. And prepared to go in deep and hard and scrap it out with Francesco Grandelli, a proper Italian street fighter. And they're both pretty near to having the tank emptied. Excellent effort, fought in tremendous spirit, great respect between them, almost as though they enjoyed the combat. Richie, something you would identify with, I'm sure. Yeah, tremendous battle that really was, because for the first part of the fight, it looked like um, Nathaniel Collins was, was actually cruising, he was boxing really well, really sensibly. Then all of a sudden, from about round five or six, something changed, he held his feet, and that's probably what Grandelli wanted. He started to come forward more, Grandelli closed that gap down, and he had a lot of success um, on, on the inside. I've actually got it seven rounds to five for Collins. I think um, he, he then had to find another second, a second win, Paul, and he had to come through the storm get back to boxing at distance and he did literally stand toe-to-toe -to -toe at times and what a good scrap it really was that had everything and it was great to see the way they embraced each other at the end of it that's what it's all about <laughs> tremendous the respect there from both men was it uh, Kevin Finnegan and Alan Minter and at the end of it, Minter said, 
I feel I know him better than my brother. <laughs> That's right, yes. Battles they had, yeah. But that's a, that's a cracking fight, isn't it, for Nathaniel Collins, his 15th fight. It was a real war. He was winning it comfortably, but then he had to really dig in and uh, change his style and had to grind it out. It was a tough fight indeed. Might need a bit of time off. After that, to let that nose injury settle down. In time-honoured fashion. New friends have been made through all that. I don't think he'll have a tougher fight than Matt Paul, to be quite honest. When you look back on this, no matter what he um, achieves in his career, he won't get many tougher than that. Indeed, and, and lest we forget, Richie, Hopey Price will be looking on and hoping, maybe, that there's a little bit of a dent in Nathaniel Collins because, of course, he was set to meet Collins, wasn't he? A mandatory for the British title. That's right, yeah. Let's hope that fight can, you know, will be down the line sometime. Opie Price, quality uh, kid indeed. Another tremendous fight. And, of course, the pride of the uh, group at the moment, Nicky Ball from Liverpool, who's got another huge... World title fight upcoming. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a round of applause for both warriors who gave it everything here tonight. <laughs> After 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Daniel Van de Veel scores the contest. 117-111. Ilyan Homovic scores the contest 116-112. And Jon Robert Lane scores the contest 116-112 to your winner by unanimous decision. And new EBU Silver Fellowweight Champion Nathaniel the Nightmare. You can forget the nightmare, it's one of the great nights for Nathaniel Collins and he won it in style, according to the judges, by six, four and four rounds on the three cards. A great victory and another big step forward for a Queensbury signing that always looked like a really savvy move. Yeah, it's all smiles now, a good victory, but just how tough was that for him? Yeah, really tough, um, a hard night work for anybody. Um, he had to dig in, it looked like, I know Richie had mentioned it, it looked like he was cruising for a while in the fight, and he won the, the, the number of the early rounds pretty convincingly and doing it at his own pace. And then Grandelli just came back into it and, and really started to take over and boss the fight. I, I mean, I, I give the fight to Collins, but not by the margin that the judges did. Um, I think Grandelli could maybe feel a little bit hard done by by how way they were. There's a shout that it could have been a draw, actually. And you can you clearly see that the columns were being affected by the broken nose. That was a, it was a mess from early on in the fight. And it was something that was causing them an issue. You know what? I thought Grandelli did well to adjust his feet slightly and, and dealing better with a 